Hi everyone, this is Alan Rosensky of Metro Manhattan Office Space. Good afternoon. The mayoral election in New York City will happen on November 2nd of this year, where either Eric Adams, the Democratic nominee, or Curtis Leewood, the Republican nominee, will take on the responsibility of becoming the city's 110th mayor. At this time, Eric Adams is strongly favored to come out as a winner given the 6-1 to one advantage of Democratic to Republican voters registered in New York City. In today's video, I wanted to take a look at some possible effects that Eric Adams' policies could have on the development of New York City and its recovery from the pandemic. One of the biggest ongoing problems is a spiking crime rate. What seems noticeable is that looking at crime statistics from 2020, NYPD noted a historic low in overall crime when it comes to the total number of incidents as compared to the year before. But this seemingly good trend was overwhelmed by a 97% increase in shootings and a 44% increase in the number of murders. Burglaries increased by 42% and car thefts increased by 67%. This is all very troubling for New York City. The unprecedented events that took place in 2020 posed major challenges for the NYPD. From a greatly diminished police force to large-scale protests that the city had to try and calm, NYPD's resources were stretched thin. Looking at statistics from 2021 so far as compared to last year, murders have increased by 17%, robbery has decreased by 6%, assaults are up 8%, and burglary is down 16%. While there has been marginal improvement in a few categories, the worst type of crimes are still seeing upticks in numbers, and this is creating major cause for concern for businesses and residents alike who are looking to return to New York City. Both mayoral candidates represent great choices from the perspective of fighting the rise in crime rate in New York City. Eric Adams is a retired police officer who served the New York Police Department for 22 years, and he has made it clear that he would like to put more officers on the street and bring back undercover anti-crime units, all while protecting black communities and working to unite people in a common goal of keeping the neighborhood safe for everyone. Curtis Sliwa has an equally long history of fighting crime in New York City. In 1977, he created a group called the Magnificent 13, which was dedicated to fighting violence and crime on the New York City subways. This group was renamed to Guardian Angels in 1979. Many decades later, they are still active today with Curtis Lewa as a group leader. As it happens, I ran into him in September of last year, where he was gracious enough to give me a short interview. I'll play it for you now. Curtis, it's great to meet you. I've been hearing about you for many, many years. Hi. Guardian Angels is patrolling New York at, at the moment. Oh, yeah. Heavy emphasis on the Upper West Side, where there have been so many problems from about 57 up to 110 from Central Park West over the Riverside Park. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed any improvement in the last few weeks? Uh, there have been improvements because we basically uh, hit the area hard, calmed it down, but the homeless and the emotionally disturbed there have just overwhelmed the system and the cops are just not responding the way they normally do. It's amazing that the city would do that with the hotels. I've heard they're, they're housing the homeless in the hotels on the Upper West Side. About 113 uh, hotels in total in all five boroughs that have been used to warehouse homeless and emotionally disturbed. No services are being treated for their mental problems or their alcohol or drug addiction. And they were getting services in the shelter. There's no reason to move them from the shelters to the hotels. Well, I guess maybe they wanted to support the hotels, which may, may have been in danger of going bankrupt, but they could have thought of a better or, uh, solution. A lot of them were friends of de Blasio before, who wine dined and pocket lined him, so maybe this was a quid pro quo. I'm sure. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised in the least. In any case, everybody in New York uh, City appreciates what you're doing. Well, and it's been great talking with you, and thanks for taking the time. I hope that you can get a sense for why he ended up winning as a Republican nominee for the mayor of New York City. Being involved in street patrols for around 40 years and talking to people from all walks of life on his radio program that he has run for 30 years has given him an excellent perspective into New York City's ongoing problems with crime. Now, whichever candidate ends up winning, the city will need to do a lot more work to prove to its business community 
that they have the city's support. To that end, Eric Adams has already started to seek alliance with several of the city's most influential business leaders. His attempt to start a dialogue with the business community contrasts the approach of Mayor Bill de Blasio, who battled with New York City's business leaders for years. Bill de Blasio has called for raising taxes for the wealthy and has seemingly ignored suggestions from prominent businesses when it comes to handling the COVID pandemic. Catherine Weil, the CEO of Partnership for New York City, a nonprofit pro-business group, has indicated that Eric Adams has contacted her after he won the primary, saying that he wanted to hear her ideas on how to create a better relationship between City Hall and business leaders in New York City. It's important for people to understand that New York cannot thrive without the support of large companies who provide the majority of corporate tax income for the city, as well as having them help employ a major part of the city's 8.5 million people. A situation that forces them to rethink their presence in New York may very well be detrimental for the future of the city and the mayoral nominee's willingness to hear ideas from all sides of the table is a refreshing turn of events. Talking about her experience with Eric Adams, Catherine Wilde has mentioned that the fact that he's focused on public safety, good management, data-driven management, and creating a business-friendly and wealthy-friendly climate are all factors that have encouraged executives to speak to Adams. She also added that we haven't heard that message in many years. A spokesman for Adams, Evan Thies, has also said that in order to grow our economy and recover from COVID so that the unemployed and working-class New Yorkers can prosper, Eric believes it is critical to create a positive business environment for economic partners who will provide the jobs, training, and internship New Yorkers need. From a commercial real estate perspective, the safety of the city plays a major role that determines where and for how long a prospective tenant may choose to enter into a leasing agreement with a landlord. If tenants feel that the future of the city is uncertain, there will be a temptation to sign shorter leases and reduce overall investment into their presence in New York City. This is especially true of businesses on the ground who have more to lose in the event of unrest or a spike in local crime. We all want to see ground level stores get cleaned up, empty spaces leased, and to have the experience of enjoying a vibrant and friendly New York City once again. It may be tempting to blame the landlords for not yielding on square foot prices as much as tenants would prefer, but the safety and business climate of the city is just as important when it comes to motivating companies to come back and fill the city's vacant commercial office space. So there you have it. Perhaps it's still too early to be optimistic about a major change in public safety and business policies in New York, but both of the current mayoral candidates are likely to influence the development of the city in a positive way. If you have any opinions of your own regarding the current candidates for mayor of New York City, please feel free to share them in the comments below. If you found this content interesting or helpful, I'd be happy if you subscribed to my YouTube channel. You can always find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Metro Manhattan. Until the next time.